name is Rosie Mutene. I am a Pan-African media proprietor. I'm also the founder and owner of the first Pan-African talent agency called Waka Talent Agent. I've been in the entertainment industry in front of the camera, behind the camera, as an activist as well for over two decades because I represent artists from across the continent and we now want to engage in developing and working on their personal brands um, and of course that, that, that involves proper brand development, um, design and, and aspects moving forward. Working across, across our borders uh, is incredibly challenging, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, it's also incredibly exciting and um, especially coming from the South African mindset where we kind of like believe that we're elitist and we're better than the rest of the continent. Um, it's a rude awakening because there's so much more to explore north of the Limpopo than there is to explore in Europe and the Americas. Granted, yes, the first world countries and so forth, but I think that if we invest a lot more time and effort into what is happening on our continent, what is happening just across our borders, I think um, we would have better infrastructure and, and we'd have stronger business connections. As the continent is developing and as we see that there's a global cash crisis with, uh, with um, uh, everything that's happening in terms of, of our currency and the economics, I honestly believe that the way forward for Africans is the entrepreneurship route. We, we come from a culture of looking after ourselves. We come from a culture of making do with what we have. You look in the townships, and it's not even just townships in South Africa. Uh, outside of Kampala, outside of Harare, um, areas within uh, Lagos, uh, you see people doing stuff for themselves creating business opportunities purely with the small resources that they do have. So, so I honestly believe that, that we have the, the, the advantage over many, many other cultures because we know how to, to, to make do with what we have. I think Africans are scared to communicate across borders because of, of the colonial impact that's been put onto us our education system. Uh, one of my, my artists who's based in Botswana, Donald Moloisi, wrote a really thought-provoking essay called Dear Upright African. And it's talking about the education system within the African schools and what we're taught. And he says that although he's traveled around the world and he's traveled the continent, he'd be able to give a detailed description of um, uh, European history of the metric system of the metro system in France but wouldn't be able to tell us who our African leaders were for the last two centuries and so with that people just believe that that well everything is bigger and better and, and outside the continent which in the in the past in terms of getting your education it was there but if you look at the, the brain drain that's happening on the continent. South Africa is the only country where the brain drain isn't returning in excess. So you have West Africa, particularly Nigeria, where you have people coming back not just with degrees, they're coming back with PhDs, they're coming back to, to put back into their countries. And, and I think that shift is going is to change, but still my age group, my generation before me and so forth, still believe that, well, if you want something done um, on a larger scale, it needs to be done in, in America, it needs to be done in, in London or the Europe. My advice to entrepreneurs is that the road is scary. Don't, don't, don't let it fool you. Uh, you need to do your homework. You need to choose a project that you're passionate about and then go into it and learn and do more research. And then when you've done more research where you even feel that you're sick and tired of the project, that's when you need to do more research. And then if you're still passionate about it, then go into it. Uh, it's a lonely ride. Um, you will lose friends because you won't have your weekend time. You also won't have that um, bank notification on the first of every month if you don't put in the work. But the, the upside of it is that after a while you will start to reap the rewards. And when you see your name on platforms or you see progress made um, through the work that you've done, that is absolutely phenomenal. Or the skills development that you've created for people, that is phenomenal. 
So I, I strongly suggest it, but you, you need to put in your work. You need to, your lifestyle is going to change. Uh, and you, um, once again, you, it has to be passion driven. So the Residential Entrepreneurs is, is a start on creating those conversations about, first of all, our entrepreneurial journeys. We want to engage with people from all walks of life, from all levels of entrepreneurship, from women, from men, from, from all industries and so forth, so that we can get understand the dynamics of how the business structures work, how the models work, and what we can what synergies can be created between the different regions. So one of the things that I did was um, uh, in 2016, I moved to Uganda purely because I needed to understand how the, the Ugandan corporate model worked and to see where the industry was and where it can go. So that when, when negotiating contracts or when moving forward and what I want to do, I now have a better understanding of how to do business in Uganda. And granted, we all can't just keep on moving to different countries, but if we have these conversations with people across borders, we can learn a lot more.